Are RRSPs actually a good idea? Are they a good idea for you? Seems like everybody has an uncle or a cousin or a friend or a whoever who has filled them in on exactly how stupid RRSPs are. And that may be true for them in their case, but is it true for you? Is their situation identical to yours? Probably not. So as nice and as awesome as I'm sure that they are, they might not have any idea what they're talking about when it comes to your situation. My wife can eat ice cream for breakfast, and she does sometimes, and she never gains anything, ever. But if I do that, I, like I fall apart at the seams. Our situations are not at all the same. So I have to do things that she wouldn't even ever consider, like exercising and watching what I eat. And good for her, she's awesome, I love her. But I don't even consider taking advice from her on how to stay trim. And the same applies to finance. You gotta know your situation or you gotta pay somebody else to do it for you so that you can know what makes sense for you. Like when to use an RRSP and when not to. And that's what we're gonna do here today. We're cracking the code. After watching this, not only will you know when it makes sense and when it doesn't, but you'll also know how easy it is to figure this out and how to estimate what you will save for every buck that you chuck in to an RRSP. But before we do this, I wanna make sure that we're all on the same page about what an RRSP actually is and what it is not. RRSP stands for Registered Retirement Savings Plan. Basically, it's meant to be a savings slash investment account for your retirement. And that's all it is. It's just an account. It's not an actual investment. Lots of people get this wrong, especially if they've had a poor experience. They see the value of their account being stagnant or going down, and so they assume that it was their RRSP that performed badly. So now they don't like RRSPs. But it wasn't their RRSP, because the RRSP is just an account. It's just a shell. It was the investments they held inside that account that gave them the heartburn. Let me give you an example. This vase or vase or whatever you call it. I put my pens in here. So this is my pen vase. But anyway, this is just a place to store things. But really, I can put whatever I want in here. And actually, you can see it's all dirty in the inside because I used to have a plant in here. <laughs> so that's... Anyway, I can put pretty much whatever I want in here within reason. I can put this remote in here if I like. I can put this sticky pad in here. Fits beautifully. But I cannot put this giant calculator in here because it's just too big, doesn't fit. Anyway, this vase is just a place to stuff things. Same with an RSP, it's just a place to stuff different kinds of investments or savings. For instance, you can put mutual funds in there or savings accounts or GICs, ETFs, stock, bonds, etc but you cannot stuff a rental property in there. Not allowed, won't fit. So you may be disappointed with the things that you've stuffed inside of the RRSP, but it ain't the RRSP's fault. But this video is not about investment options. The point of this video is showing you how you can figure out whether or not this type of account or shell makes sense for you. And really, there's only one reason you'd ever wanna use an RRSP, to save tax, that's it. It's actually the whole reason this kind of account was invented, the government, wanted to encourage people to put away money and to save for their retirement so that they wouldn't end up old and unable to work anymore and dependent on the government. So they said, hey, save, invest, put away money for your retirement and we will reward this wonderful behavior by making you pay us less. We will give you a tax deduction. And don't worry if you don't understand how tax deductions work. You don't need a degree for this one. It's just a reduction in the amount of tax that you owe the government. So if you have a tax deduction, you owe the government less. For instance, if you have a $5,000 tax deduction, then that is $5,000 less tax you owe the government, or in other words, 5,000 extra dollars you get to stuff in your pockets. And while you might not be quite as good as the government at spending that money, I recommend you give it a shot. So those are the basics. An RSP is just a shell or an account for you to stuff different kinds of investments into. You get tax deductions for doing it and tax deductions equal you giving the government less. Easy peasy. And now that we're all on the same page and understand what an RSP is and what it isn't, that it's really just a tool for saving tax and it is not an investment, let's get into when it makes sense to use this tool and when it doesn't. To figure this out, you only need to know two things. You need to know your annual income 
and your tax rate. Your income should be easy. Most people have a general idea of what they make. If you're having a difficult time figuring this out, you can always look at your last notice of assessment or your last tax return. And while that won't tell you this year's income, it will tell you last year's income. And if there's not really a substantial change, then you can pretty much just use last year's number. Figuring out your tax rate is also easy you just Google it. What you need to remember here is that you live in a country where everyone that can tax you does tax you. And so when it comes to income tax or the tax that you pay on what you earn in the year, you are being taxed by both the federal government and your provincial government. So you are looking for your combined tax rate. And that's what you Google. Of course, you're going to see a bunch of different pages you can click on, but I recommend Ernst & Young. Super clean, super easy to navigate. So that's what I'm doing. And let's just look here at the BC rates, for example, because that's my neighborhood. All you need to do is find the spot where your income fits and note the corresponding tax rate. For example, let's say your income is 100K, so you'd fit in this row. Look in a couple columns over, you can see the tax rate is 31%. Now I'm going to rabbit trail for just a sec because this is one of the most common misconceptions I find when I'm meeting new clients. Lots of people, and I mean lots of people, no matter how much money they have or how much income they make, think that their top tax rate applies to all of their income, but it don't. In Canada, you are actually taxed in layers. It's called a progressive tax system, and that's because each layer or sliver of income that you earn is taxed progressively more aggressively. If you notice here, the first 15K someone earns in BC in 2023 is taxed at 0%. Nada. You do not pay a nickel on that first 15K. The next sliver of income, 15K to 22K, is taxed at 15%, but it's only this sliver that is taxed at 15%, not all the income. That first 15K is still taxed at 0%. So you don't actually have one tax rate in Canada. You have a bunch of tax rates. And as you can see, the higher your income goes, the more tax rates you will have. And they tend to get progressively higher the more you make. But even when you hit a higher tax bracket, like 40%, you have to remember that you are not paying 40% tax on all your income, only the income you earn between 127 and 165K. The income you earn on 106 to 127K is only taxed at 38%, and that's because it's a different sliver, and so on. So when you hear someone say something like, I don't want that promotion, or I don't wanna make more money because it's just gonna bump me up into a higher tax bracket, well, now you will be able to see the folly in that statement. You'll be able to whip out a chart like this and show them what a wizard you are. And then they'll go ahead, take the promotion, make more money, and love you ever more. So now that you're a wizard and you can see the different rates at which you're taxed, you'll be able to notice that your top tax rates are the nastiest. And this is where tax deductions come in. Any money you put into an RRSP, you will get a tax deduction for. It will reduce your taxable income for that year. You see, the government looks at anything that you put into an RRSP as income for a later year, not for this year. And that's because you're putting it away for later, arguably for retirement. So they don't tax you on it now, they'll tax you on it later when you pull it out. So if you made 100 grand this year and put $5,000 into your RSP, the government would see that as 95,000 of income for this year. And that other 5K, well, that's income for later because you put that into a retirement plan. So they'll tax you on that when you pull it out in retirement. So this year, the government will only tax you on 95,000. And since in this example, the tax rate on that top $5,000 is 31%, that's how much tax you'll save this year. 31% of five grand. Your tax deduction is 1,550. That's yours, you can keep it. What if you put 10,000 into your RSP instead of five? Well, now you've dropped your taxable income from 100K to 90K. Notice, in BC, this would drop your income into a lower tax bracket. So you'd be saving a bunch of tax at 31% and some at 28.2. Now, you can geek out on the math all you like, but if you wanna keep it simple, just call it 30% for a quick ballpark average. And now you can see you would save about 30% of that 10 grand. You'd save about $3,000 in taxes. Nice. See how easy this is to figure out? Knowing how to do this can add a massive amount to your net worth over time because not only are you giving the government less in taxes, but you're also building your own pot of money, your own nest egg. You're building wealth.
Now I showed you all of that because I wanted to run you through the basic logic of how this works because once you understand, it's super easy to know and make really good decisions on the fly. But some of you don't wanna do any math ever. And so you don't have to, there's a shortcut. Just Google RRSP calculator. Again, I love Ernst & Young, so clean, so easy to use. Just type in your income, plug in however much you think you might wanna put into your RSP for the year and voila. You can see the tax savings by province and territory, super easy. Now all of that is well and good, but it doesn't actually tell you whether or not it's worth it for you. Because remember, you're putting this money away for retirement, so you're essentially kissing it goodbye for a very long time, so you don't get to use it for other things. So it has to be worth it for you. The incentive has to be big enough for you to kiss that money goodbye. Basically, you need to be saving a lot of tax to make it worth it. Because remember, when you pull that money out in retirement, you're going to pay taxes on it. So to figure out if it's actually worth it for you, you need to know if you're going to save more now than what you'll have to pay later. Otherwise, there's no point. But luckily, that too is super easy to do. You see, most people while they're in their peak earning years and they're just raking it in are in a much higher tax bracket. And that's kind of obvious. And when you're in retirement, you tend to be making quite a bit less, so you're in a much lower tax bracket. So if your top tax bracket now is 31 or 38 or 53%, but in retirement, your top tax bracket is gonna be 20 or 22%, well, that's a pretty good spread, and you get to keep that spread. But if you're not making any income this year, or if your income is really low and you're only in a 20 or 22% tax bracket, then that's hardly worth it at all because that might be your same tax bracket when you're in retirement. So there's really hardly any lure to kiss that money goodbye when you could put it to other use, such as maybe paying down your mortgage a little faster. Now it is important to know that there's a lot of other aspects to RSPs that I didn't get into today, such as the tax-free growth you get while your money is in an RSP, the implications of early withdrawals or using the home buyer's plan, or how being incorporated may make using an RSP an absolutely horrifying idea for you. But I wanted to keep this simple. I want to help you get your head around one of the most powerful financial tools that we have available Available to us in Canada. If you use it properly, you can add a lot to your net worth over time. A lot.